Well, the clock tower is one of Spokane's most beautiful landmarks, but 50 years ago, time was running out for the iconic clock. And thanks to a local effort, we do still get to enjoy the Spokane staple. Our photographer Dave Summers sat down with the man at the helm of saving it. Well, I remember the history that used to be here. Without the railroads, Spokane would be a fishing village. That's the significance and power that the railroads had on the, the commerce and the activity. If you own a farm and you grow grain, how are you going to move it without a railroad? There was no I-90 and there were no 707s back then. It was railroads and how are you going to move stuff without them? You're not. And that was the whole point of it. It brought the industry commerce to the uh, area. This is the building, what it looked like. It was uh, a symbol of, of what was Spokane. Well, I got here in 67. I fell in love with Spokane. The history of it, the railroads were involved. I was a railroad modeler, rail, rail fan. And I saw a jumble of tracks everywhere in Spokane. And uh, when the stations were taken out of the Riverfront Park plan and taken out of the Expo plan, I got involved and I went to City Hall and talked to Sylvan Fullweiler about it. And he told me, well, Mr. Quinn, the steam boilers are all wore out. They'd have to be expensive to replace. The Union Station didn't have any steam boilers. That started the Save Our Station campaign to, uh, to save the stations. And there were two of them, the Union Station and the Great Northern Station. This was the other building that was there. This is called the Union Station. The Mo Union Pacific, the Milwaukee Road, and the Spokane International used this station for their passenger trains. The Union Station was a much more substantial building built in 1914. That could have been many things, but the, Union, the Great Northern had the sentimental historic value because of its age and the tower. We got 15,000 signatures to put it on the ballot. The city responded by putting a million and a half dollar levy on the ballot itself to restore the buildings. However, they didn't account for the demolition costs of taking the stations down. I don't know where that money was or came from or whatever, but they had money to tear it down, but not money to restore it. I find that ironic. We put it, the issue on the ballot and it got 43% favorable, which, uh, meant that uh, the bill, it would fail. And uh, the city responded by saying, well, if the stations aren't saved, we'll save the tower. That was their response to the effort. It's amazing the commitment and passion from, from citizens to be able to shape the way uh, our city looks today. You know, behind me, that was slated to be demolished along with the depot. And if it wasn't for Jerry Quinn Sr., that would probably be gone today. And that's something to take on City Hall. It's, not for the weak of heart. It's, it's something you have to uh, understand you're taking on a windmill. What's forgotten in all of this is the donation that the Burlington Northern gave to the city. The property and the buildings was a gift by them. They get no recognition today on their support. Without it, none of this would have happened. So the tower now has significance. It has its own history. It has its own relevance as the icon of Spokane, which I'm appreciative of today. Not back then, but today I am.